you won't need to tip the waiter when you stay at home to perfectly cook this mouth-watering, tender, juicy cut of tri-tip when using the reverse sear method and a meat thermometer. It's time for another hot dish from Happy Healthy Why. First step, set the oven to cook low and slow at a nice 225 degrees Fahrenheit. In general, the lower the temperature, the more tender the meat when it's done. Next, I prepare a roasting pan on the cheap with a baking sheet, a bit of aluminum foil for easy cleanup, and a couple of cooling racks to suspend the meat. Then we set it aside. Since my son and wife love their beef well done, while my daughter and myself prefer it a beautiful medium rare, I am going to cut this tri-tip in half so that we can put it in the oven at different times and hopefully they both get to our doneness that we like at the same time. Once the tri-tip is cut, it's time to season it. A very simple yet liberal coating of salt, pepper, and garlic powder will enhance the crust and give it a very lovely flavor after it's been seared. Next, it's time to prepare the 24-hour marinated tri-tip in my special half-cup Worcestershire sauce, half-cup red wine mixture marinade that I got from my dearly departed Uncle Furman. I love the tenderness and flavor of this marinade, but I wonder if it truly brings out the best in a tri-tip. Hence, the desire to compare it to a non-marinated version. Even with the marinade, still going to coat the tri-tip liberally with salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Now that all four cuts and four styles are ready, it's time to slow roast the tri-tip in the oven for at least a good hour, if not more. Right now, it's easy to tell which tri-tip is which, and you can see that the marinade tri-tip has a different color due to the meat absorbing the wine Worcestershire mixture. But... After they are cooked, it'll be very difficult to tell the difference. And I'm going to give you a chance to guess which one is which after they are done. And then I'll tell you if you are correct. From my previous experience, it only takes about 20 minutes to go from medium rare to well done. So after 20 minutes, I am going to add the other two tri-tips so they can be rare and they both can be equally done at the same time. Or at least that's what I thought was going to happen. After about one hour of cooking time for the tri-tip that we're looking to get well done and 40 minutes for the medium rare one, I am checking the doneness with a Halbor instant read thermometer. I usually poke my meat to test for doneness, but I decided to try out this thermometer to see if it can take out the guesswork in testing beef doneness. According to the beef doneness meat chart, I am looking for about 130 degrees for the medium rare and 155 degrees for well done before I blast the meat with a 500 degree heat sear which I am anticipating will add an extra 5 degrees to the meat to get it to the exact doneness that I want. But as I poke the meat we want well done first, I find the temperature is 116 degrees and 113 degrees, a far cry for the 155 degrees we are looking for. For the ones looking to be medium rare, they are only at 106 degrees and 109 degrees. That's just not enough heat at all. Back in they go. 30 minutes later, checking in temperatures again, I see 133 degrees for both of the ones I want to be well done, and 130 degrees for the ones we're hoping to become medium rare. I am curious as to why the tri-tips are so close to the same temperature, even though they're put in the oven 20 minutes apart. But that takes me to about an hour and 10 minutes for the medium rare ones that are nice, perfectly 130 for me to take out so that we can sear it later. After another 30 minutes, or a total of two hours of cooking time, the tri-tips we want to be medium well are at 145 degrees and 141 degrees. They haven't even come close to reaching the 155 degrees I was looking for, but it is getting late, so... It's time just to take them out and steer them and hope for the best. I'm still surprised at how long it's taking to cook the tri-tip as I've done this before and it usually takes around an hour and 10 minutes for a nice medium well. But the meat thermometer doesn't lie, does it? 
Did I remember the oven temperature that I used correctly? Now it's time for some double duty. Set the oven temperature to 500 degrees so it gets ready for searing. And while the oven is coming up to temperature, this is a great time to let the meat rest so the juices don't start flowing when you cut it through after the sear. The oven is hot and we are ready to sear the tri-tip. After six minutes, I checked the meat and there was some charring on the meat, which enhances the flavor. At this point, it's really difficult to tell which was marinated and which one was not. Just by looking at this picture, can you tell the difference? Let me give you the answer. Now it's time to check the accuracy of the meat thermometer by cutting through the meat. Let's start with the 130 degree meat and as you can see, it's just like the thermometer said. It's between rare and a nice medium rare. Okay, that one as expected. Let's have a look at the 145 degree meat. Not surprisingly, and unfortunately, it didn't get up to the medium well done as I was hoping for. The meat looks very medium to medium rare, just like the thermometer predicted. You win this round, Habor Meat Thermometer. You win. Now that I've seen, tested, and reviewed that this meat thermometer did its job correctly at this time, both to my grief and to my excitement, it's time to compare the flavor of the two styles of meat, whether the marinated with wine washer sauce and not marinated is any different. Let's see what my kids think. This one, whatever this one is. Yeah, I thought that one's very chewy. Pretty good texture if you ask me. It's a little rare for me, I guess, but it's pretty good. I feel like I can sort of taste the wine in this one, maybe because I smell it. There's much more of a wine flavor in that one. I can tell, like, there's a lot more of that sort of hair that tries to burst out. You know, I'll explain it. But yeah, how much of a flavor that tries to, like, punch through. I feel like that's exactly what this one has. Let's see about this one. Flavor is very subtle in this one. Nothing seems to like be taking over as much as like this one. I feel like there's one flavor that's punching out. I can't name it, but there's just one thing that's coming out. This one, it feels like it's much, very much more mild. And the flavor for this one is very much on the edges. All the flavors like right here in the middle, there's really not that much. I have to say which one's better, it has to be this one. I, I don't like the flavor that sort of punches out as much in this one. You can definitely taste the wine in this one. The outside is sweet and I get a little bit of pepper coming through, but that's mainly all I taste, just sweet-ish meat with a hint of pepper. The texture is pretty okay. It's pretty soft. This one's pretty good. This may, there's, it doesn't taste like there's any wine in this one. <laughs> to me, it tastes kind of like salt and pepper and maybe something else. And I kind of like this one better because I'm not much of a fan of sweet meat, but um, I like this one's texture better than the other one. But in all, I like the pepper one better. Happy Healthy Wild Chef Barry here reminding you to... Wait a minute, you're still here? Well, if so, then you might want to consider clicking on the like button or leaving a comment down below. It really helps support the channel. 
And you can also subscribe and click the bell to be notified of all my new videos that come out on Mondays with shorts on Thursdays. Thanks for watching. Have a happy and healthy day.